Uh, good evening everybody, uh, it's Chuck again and uh, this video we're going to go over securing a wireless network so how to better secure your home network uh, first off to keep people from seeing it uh, and then to go just a little bit further and to keep people out of it when you don't want them in it um, when your internet provider comes and sets up your network for you they're gonna test it to make sure it works but they're not gonna set it up with the highest level security um, and so we're gonna go over and we're gonna take a look at, at how you can do that yourself so let me go ahead and get this out of the way and we'll go ahead and get uh, get started all right again it's gonna be a little different uh, the router I'm gonna log into is actually a router that's typically given to you by Verizon um, it's an Action Tech router. Uh, the screen may look a little bit different than your router itself, but the concept is the same. You're, you're still going to have the same stuff. They may just be in different areas. So first off, we need to take a look at how do we even log into our router. Well, your router has an IP address, so we need to get that IP address. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to your start and in the search box just type in CMD is short for command and hit enter what that's going to do is that's going to bring up uh, just a black box on your screen now what you want to type in that black box is this word it's IP config no spaces just type IP config and hit enter. What you will get back is this. And if you get back an error message again, just, just type it in again. Just type in IP config and hit enter. What you'll get back is your address, your subnet mask, and your default gateway. The default gateway is what we want. That's your router. If you're doing this at home, it's very likely that your IP address is going to be 192.168.1.1 um, or something very close to that. Once you have that, you're ready to log in. Open up any browser you want. It can be Internet Explorer, it can be Firefox, it can be Chrome, it doesn't matter. Just go ahead and launch it and then type in that address up in the address box. So it's 192.168.1.1 and hit enter. That's going to bring you to your login page. Now, this is where you need the username and the password. A lot of modems, a lot of routers have the username and the password on a sticker on the router itself. Um, Verizon is uh, very popular for doing that. They'll, they'll generate it when before they bring it out and it'll be on a sticker. If it if it's somebody different they, they just may tell you what your username and password is. So you type the username and password in and you click OK. Now you're actually on the router itself. Now you can start making changes. Okay. Now we don't have time to go through all of these. We're just going to hit the big ones you're going to want to go to your wireless settings. Again, yours may look a little bit different. It may be a tab at the top um, instead of just a little icon or it may be a tab down the side. But either way, go into wireless settings. This is my setup as of right now. Well, I'm immediately going to go right into my basic security settings. Well, my wireless is turned on, which is good. That's how my laptops and my smartphone and uh, even some of my desktops that run wireless can connect to my router without having to use a cable. I can get to the internet without having to use a cable. Really the only change we want to do here is change what they call your SSID. It's your service set identifier. Uh, it's basically the name of your network. So when you search for available networks, what do you want to see in the list? Well, what you would like to do is make it of course something that you can remember but not something that everybody in your neighborhood knows it's you so again 
whatever you want to call it um, just something that you can remember so uh, I'll just call mine um, CH101 So that's going to change the name. So if I search for available networks, I will see this in the list. That one's mine. Okay, down here at the bottom, they start talking about WEP. Well, WEP is a security, but it's a very weak security. It's got a lot of vulnerabilities to it, so I am going to keep that off. Okay, the only change I'm going to make here is my SSID. Now I'm going to go down to the bottom and click on apply. That's going to make the changes to my router. And it's going to bring me right back to where I was and it's going to hold my changes. Everything else we're going to do is from this box here, advanced security. These are the three levels of security this particular router allows. Web, WPA and WPA2. WPA2 is by far the strongest. That's the one I want to pick. I want to pick the strongest possible security I can have. It also does encryption. So I'm going to click that. And once I click that, <coughs> excuse me, Verizon has their own default password. They recommend that you use that, but you don't have to. You could go down here and create a custom one. And one of them does have to be a number. It says though it is highly recommended to use at least 16 or more characters. So it, it's good if you can make it 16 and remember it. The longer the key, the stronger it is. Now, I'm not going to put one in that long. I'm just going to show you what it's like to put one in here. Um, there you go. So I'll put that in there. So that's my password. And again, I'm going to apply it. So, what we've done so far, we've changed the name of our network itself. And we've turned this to the highest level of security we can have out of these three. Another great thing to do is this one. It's called your SSID broadcast. Is as you already know, when you click on you know, view available networks, you see a list of networks. You see yours and you probably see all your neighbors. Well, when you click on SSID broadcast, it's really just a radio button. Do you want to enable it or disable it? If you disable it, and apply that setting. Now when people search for networks, for available wireless networks, yours will not show up on the list. Now keep in mind that when you search for available networks, it won't show up for you either. But that's a good thing because now when you want to join your network for the first time, you actually just have to go all the way down to the bottom and there's typically one that says other network or it may even say hidden network depending on what operating system you're running you choose hidden network or other network and it is going to ask you what is the SSID well that's the name that we set way back here in basic that's this and then it's going to ask you what is the password well that's the one that we set up when we set this so now anyone who wants to get on our network must know two things. We're not giving them one and they just have to know the other. They need to know both. Now if you want to take it one step further, there is something, <coughs> excuse me, something that we call MAC authentication. We also call it MAC filtering. This is the highest level you can possibly get what you're actually doing is creating something that we call an access control list. You check the box here that says enable access list and then accept all devices listed below. Now every device, every desktop, every laptop, every tablet, every smartphone has a MAC address. 
it looks very similar to this MAC address right here. It's six groups of hexadecimal numbers. You need to find out your MAC address, put it in this box, and click the button that says Add. That will put it down here in the list. Only machines that, first off, know the name of your network, know the password, and are on this list can get on your network. If they know your password, if they know the name, but they're not on this list, they don't get on. They're not allowed. So you've now added a third level of protection to your network. Now let me show you real quick how to grab this MAC address. What you're going to want to do, I'm just going to, I'll show you in a notepad. <clears throat> what you want to do, back in that command prompt where we type this in, you want to type the same thing in, but this time do a space forward slash all and hit enter. <clears throat> you're going to get a lot more back. What you're going to get back is something very similar to this. Now this is not really my MAC address. I've changed it because um, I don't want to give out my MAC address. But uh, what you're going to see is a line that says physical address. And there it is right there. Now it typically shows it with dashes inside of here. We put it in with colons inside of here. So if I wanted to put my machine inside of here, well, I've already done it. It's right there. You just type it in. The number, a colon, the number, a colon, the number, etc. And you click on Add. And if you want to add another one, you kind of just go back in here again and you type, you know, I'll kind of copy theirs. Uh, 20 E O O O 41. Oops. 41 O O. And I'll add that one. So as it stands right now, the only machines that can get on my wireless network are ones that already know the name of my network because they're not going to find it by just looking for it, by just viewing available networks. They need to know my password and they need to be inside of this list. I'm going to click apply and it's going to make my changes. And there we are. There's only one more thing that you really should do, and most of these are back on the main page. There's typically a link that says change login username slash password. Depending on your type of router, your username and password may be all over the internet. The default username and password. So it's safe, to be safe, you should change these. So again, change your username to whatever you want. This is only used for logging into your router. But setting up all this security and then keeping the default username and password to get to your router does no good. Because if somebody can get here and they know the default username and password, they can get in and they can change whatever they want. So change this again to something strong, but something you can remember. Um, Again, it really doesn't matter, you know, what it is, um, just anything that, that you can remember. Because this is definitely something you don't want to forget. Now, I'm going to do something simple here and just put my name in it. Um, and I'll put my password in. Um, and i got to retype it. Now, make sure you remember this because once you click on apply and then click on apply again it's going to log you out. This is so you can log back in with the new username and password and now I'm in. So we've changed the username and password we've changed some basic security settings by changing our SSID We've given it a high level of encryption and security. We are not broadcasting it out to everybody. And we've even put in uh, MAC authentication or MAC filtering to keep everybody out unless we say they can get in.
They're just some of the settings, but that will definitely secure your network. Just keep in mind, when you make changes to your router, you are going to have to go back to your laptops and your tablets and your smartphones, and you are going to have to reconnect because now your the name of your network has changed and the password has changed. Therefore, you are going to have to reconnect back to it. Okay. Well, I hope this has uh, been of some help. Um, please leave any any comments uh, if uh, if you'd like to see something or uh, if you need me to explain something any uh, any differently. Um, like the video and subscribe uh, as I'll be posting uh, a whole lot, a whole a bunch of videos coming up on how to do things like stealth scans and uh, you know, checking password complexity and, and things like that. So anything you guys want to know, definitely drop that in the comments field. I'd be more than happy to take a look at it. All right, have a good day, and I'll see you guys soon.